Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. With Super Hell Dive out, Nasica's Hell Divers can take one step further and show just how far they'll go for Super Earth. With increased enemy presence comparative to Hell Dive, Mega Ness, and Fortresses, I'm getting reinforced at rates I haven't seen since launch. But after days and days of playing since the update, the mission I found to be the hardest didn't have any Fortresses or Mega Ness. It didn't involve running around the map completing every objective, nor did it involve having to deal with a ridiculous amount of gunships, stalkers, mortars, and jammers. It actually was a mission where you really didn't need to move anywhere, there were no optional objectives, and it was half the length of any standard mission, and your only real purpose is to just sit there and defend. If you haven't realized it yet, I'm talking about the Evacuate High Value Assets mission, specifically the one done on the bot side. A quick refresher of the mission to those who don't know, you, and ideally for your sake, three other people, dive into an area to defend two generators as over time, high value assets to the war effort will be evacuated from the planet via a rocket. As far as I know, there's nothing you can do to speed up this process. What you can do is take defensive positions and defend against wave after wave of enemies. The layout is very favorable to defenders. Enemies spawn on the outer edge of the map and they funnel into the objective site, starting by either going through one out of two main doors, then moving into a single path up and towards the generator. With durable walls and elevation, you and your team have both the high ground advantage and the perks of having groups of enemies funnel for your hard hitting airstrikes and orbitals. Now the only thing they can do is really just overwhelm you with their sheer numbers and firepower. If you were to get pushed back though, there are sections on the map where you can close off advances with doors, which you can use to buy some time to set up your new defensive position. And here's the thing, in most standard missions, be it you launching the ICBM or even evacuating citizens, if you were to get overwhelmed, you can just retreat, regroup, and try again. In this mission, once you get to that part with the generators, there's no backing out anymore. You can't run away and wait for enemies to despawn, and you can't wait for reinforcements, so you can try as a 4 person squad. In those missions, the mission's over when you pretty much all die and run out of respawns, but for this mission, if both generators are destroyed, you just lose. Whether you had 20 reinforcements or 1, there's no way to repair those guys, call in new ones, or right? basically anything. So that was the mission overview, and again, these generators aren't heavily fortified or have any defensive capabilities, so you really need to make sure nothing gets near them. Against bugs, it's easier because a lot of them are melee, so they need to be right next to the generators to actually start swinging and do damage. For bots, they have ranged hard-hitting units, so you can already tell that there's going to be some heightened sense of danger from them. So here's a list here of what makes this mission so hard against the bots, and we'll start with the fact that they have long-range options of destroying your generators. They don't need to be right up against them to damage it. Even near the outer edge of the map, the very place where they spawn in from, there are some potential mission-ending dangers to be aware of. Before Super Hell Dive, this was already a problem with uh, Factory Striders, who with their very tall frame and mounted cannon turret can just peek over the wall and just hit the generator from there and destroy it. Sometimes this happens so quick you won't realize it, and if you do see it happen, you sometimes won't even have the media tools on hand to address it, so you're just going to be hopelessly watching it. And this can happen anytime, which is why it's very heartbreaking where even after being ever vigilant for 7 whole rockets, there can be that one factory strider with a can turd that just snuck on by and suddenly brought an end to everything. Despite this though, there were some games on difficulty 9 where I was able to focus on those factory striders, especially their can turds, and still get a mission complete at the end. However, on Super Hell Dive, it's a whole nother ball game. Both Hell Dive and Super Hell Dive have increased enemy presence, but the threat level of those enemies on Super Hell Dive is a lot more distinguishable. You get a lot more heavier type units dropped on you. And it's bad enough that at times a wave of bot drops will have one or even two factory striders, but on Super Hell Dive, it's asking, you know, what if every bot drop was a factory strider? It's two. Three. Guys, it's above us! What the fuck? Oh my god, it's another! Oh my god, it's another! To make matters worse, there's a new barrage or tank with its explosive and long range capabilities. This poses a great danger to both your team, but more specifically the generators. You remember how I mentioned earlier that the Strider can just, you know, peekaboo over the wall and just one shot the generator? Yeah, that's pretty like insanely broken though, right? But the thing is, this thing right here, this tumor on treads here, can start attacking your generators the moment they spawn. It was bad enough that you got stuck with factory Strider lookout duty, but now you also gotta include barrage tanks to that list. So long range game ending enemies, that's the first one. And the second reason is that the rest of the units are no joke too. Shredder tanks can leave you with so many holes you'll become Swiss cheese. Annihilator tanks, rocket hulks, heavy devastators, and even the reinforced scout shredder can endlessly ragdoll you while they advance, if not just outright kill you. Now being ragdolled is incredibly annoying to deal with. It completely rids you of your ability to fight back or even stim the damage you just took. 
and you might even die during that process and then you need to be reinforced and this costs a lot of time what's worse is that also that one explosion that sends you to a ragdoll can also displace you far from your team's position and if you're holding something like a backpack or a support weapon you might not be able to even get it back and safely return when you respawn and there's also that very small case situation where you have a very strong orbital or eagle in hand and then you get hit by some stray rocket causing you to drop it on you and your team so with all these other enemies you know there's going to be someone who needs to focus on those striders and barrager tanks so they'll be taking things like a spear a commando a precision strike or a 110 rocket pod so if someone's focusing on all of them there needs to be someone who also focuses on the other threats you know hulks berserkers devastators the whole lot of them and this brings me to my third point as to why i think this mission is hard coordination or more specifically the lack thereof let's be real with each other here we're diving with people we don't know this game has gone a bit stale sometimes when all of the nerfs balance changes and new games out there our friends have moved on to greener pastures but you me and the other random people out there have decided to continue diving and keep the fight alive good for you good for us even if your team is full of randoms still try your best to communicate what you're doing and what you're intending to focus on in the mission if you have four people bringing anti-tank you're going to be swarmed by berserkers and regular bot troopers while they call forward spawning drops on you if you're going to be completely focused on thinning out mobs then tanks and factory tries are just going to plow right through you beyond what you bring it's also where you want to set up i think positioning is really important and i think it's good to set up crossfire so that hell divers can draw units towards them and have their teammates on the other side now shoot at those exposed weak spots drawing fire is very important and it's good to make yourself bait as much as you can because again it's not you who matters, it's the two generators. We are as expendable as can be, so be sure to reinforce as quickly as you can, because more boots on the ground is better than less boots on the ground. And if all four of you are able to be smart with your enemy prioritization, positioning, and stratagem uses, then you're gonna have an easy time going through this mission, even on Super Hell Dive. When I won my first bot defense on difficulty 10, I was really just focusing on dealing with ground troops and assisting with tanks and factory striders when I could. I had a heavy machine gun and supply pack, so I was able to melt as much as I could, make sure that no bots got a chance to call on the drop on top of us. And the rest of my teammates were bringing things like heavy machine gun emplacements and mortars, which were very good. You can get a lot of value out of these stratagems and the heavy machine gun and the mortar, for example, are able to deal with both the heavies and the mob of bots. It took me hours and hours too to finish that first bot game. And before I did the bot version, I did the bug defense and I didn't think the automaton version would be so hard, but I was wrong. It was disgustingly harder. And even though the bugs have their fair share of high threat units, they all have very quick and easy ways to respond to them. For example, the Impaler and the Baltine can easily be taken out with a single precision strike. Chargers can also be a pain, but you can stun a Charger, whether it be the Behemoth, the Basic, or the Spore version. One stun grenade is enough to just hold them down. You can't do the same for all those automaton tanks. The bugs also don't ragdoll you as often, and they don't have the same long range means to cheat out a generator from you. So overall, even though this mission was really frustrating at times and very, very hard, I did feel like this, it was a genuine super hell dive, which I liked. And after I got my first one, I kept playing for a while. I couldn't find that much success because I was trying out new different things, but I'm curious as to what you guys think about the bot defense mission on difficulty 10. What types of strategies your team did and what strategies you brought? What worked best for you? I'm very curious, so let me know in the comments. But that's pretty much it for the video. If you like what you heard and like what you see, be sure to like and subscribe. If you're interested in more Helldivers 2 content, be sure to check out my second channel for more frequent gameplay uploads. Follow me on Twitch to see me play live and check out the Discord for the channel to say hi. Appreciate you guys checking out the video and have a nice day.